Hello. I'd like to share some thoughts with you from God's Word today. Uh, in the Gospels, the four Gospels of John, or uh, got four Gospels, including John, there are many stories about miracles Jesus performed. Wonderful stories, healings, and casting out demons, and so forth. Uh, I'd like to read, focus on one about a, a healing of a blind man. And this particular man was born blind. It was a congenital anomaly, meaning it was from birth. And it's in John chapter 9. So if you want to turn to that, the Gospel of John chapter 9. And it starts out in verse 1. We'll unpack some of these verses here. It says, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And I thought about that a little bit, and the thought came to me, if that was about me, if I'd have been somehow transported back in time, time travel always blows my mind, but it might read something like this. Now, Michael passed by a man who was blind from birth. Might have said the same about you if you'd have been there as well. About Jesus, it doesn't say Jesus passed by a man born blind from birth. It says, as he passed by, he saw a blind man born from birth. And that little uh, difference is very important in my mind. It just reminds me that Jesus always sees my problems, sees my needs, sees me when I'm in distress. He never just passes by and doesn't notice. You and I do pass by a lot. In today's culture, you know what's real common? It's driving down a, any, any city in, in the whole United States. And if it's a fairly good-sized city, invariably you'll see a man or a woman or a young man, old age, doesn't matter, standing on the corner with a cardboard sign holding up saying, used to say, we'll work for food. They don't say that anymore. They say homeless. Anything will help. And they're asking for help. And uh, we sometimes see it, but you get so used to it that sometimes you just drive right on by. Don't even notice it. Well, Jesus never just drives by. He sees us. He knows what's going on in our lives. And that's, that can be two things. Number one, it can be a comfort. I'm glad he knows. I'm glad he cares. Sometimes I wonder, how, why are things like this? If only the Lord knew what was going on, well, he does. He sees everything in your life. And the second thing it can do is make you uncomfortable. <laughs> because if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, or you're not doing something that you should be doing, he sees that too. But at any rate, in this story here, in John chapter 9, as he passed by, he saw this man who was born blind from birth. And his disciples were with him. Now in verse 2, we continue reading, and his disciples asked him, saying, and here's the question, Rabbi, and that, that was a good term, good respectful term, just means teacher. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Their thinking was uh, that sin was always connected to problems in your life. Now, they knew that everybody, generally speaking, is a sinner. You and I know that. You probably know the verse and could quote it for me, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, some of us may be a little worse sinners than others, but we're all sinners. And so his disciples were saying there had to be something that this man, was there something that he did or he's going to do when he grows up or something his parents did that, that, that he was born blind that caused this, this malady, this congenital anomaly in his life. Then in verse 3, we think, oh, here's the answer. And many people think this is uh, the reason why he was born blind. Now look closely at verse 3. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, comma, but that the works of God should be revealed in him, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. And at first glance, it does sound like 
Jesus' answer explains why he was born blind. Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, comma, but that the works of God should be revealed in him, period. In other words, people think, uh, commentators say this all the time, uh, that the reason he was born blind was so that the works of God could be revealed in him. And then it goes on to say, I must work the works of him who sent me while it's day. And the night's coming when no man can work. So as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But most of you, or many of you maybe, uh, realize that punctuation is not something that's in the original language here. As far as that goes, neither are verse numbers. The verse numbers and chapters were added later uh, to help us be able to find things. It was especially hard in Bible days. They had big long scrolls and you did have to unroll the scroll and judge well about here's how long is, and they knew about where, how long it was. But in our Bible today, can you imagine just having a book with just no chapter breaks and no verses? It'd be hard to find it. So they were added. But if you look at this again, and because the punctuation isn't added, Jesus said or answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, period. It makes sense to just say that. They asked, and that was his answer, neither one. Then he had this new thought, which was, he spent more time on and was the real point of this verse here and the, the real reason he was trying to teach them something. He says, but he was born blind, but it wasn't his fault, a specific sin. It wasn't his parents' fault. But here's something else, that the works of God should be revealed in him. In other words, that we can use his situation to reveal God's mighty works in his life i must work the works of him who sent me while it's day and he was referring to the fact that even as jesus god in the flesh there was only a limited time he had on earth because humans all die and he was going to die too as his human his body was going to be killed and he said i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night's coming when no man can work and as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Now, certainly, sometimes sin can be a reason, specific sin for things in your life. But in this case, it wasn't, and it's not always. And what Jesus was saying here was it's important for you and I to realize that we must work the works of him who saved us today. Because we're not going to be here forever and ever. And as long as I'm in the world, he says, I'm the light of the world. Now, in verse, we continue on here. In verse 6, when he had said these things, he spit on the ground, and he made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And it might have been, <laughs> if some people would say, oh, I don't want somebody spit mixed with some dirt and rubbed on my eyes that's kind of germs and now we're real aware in this covid uh, situation we live in the environment of masks and hand washings and rubber gloves everywhere we go that uh, that wouldn't be something we'd want and but he didn't really have a choice because he couldn't see what jesus was doing might have heard him spit i don't know but at any rate he, Jesus did that, and then he said, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went, it says, and he washed, and he came back seeing. That was verse 7. So the interesting thing is, why do you use that? There's other times when he just spoke and people were healed. He could have just thought and not even said anything, and the, the man's eyes could have been healed. He's God. He's omnipotent, omniscient. He knows everything. He's almighty, all-powerful, God in the flesh. But I have a theory on this. Uh, oftentimes, when God says things in his word, a response is needed on our part of faith and obedience and trust. Your obedience 
the fact that you obey God's word and do what it says indicates that you are believing it, you're trusting in it. And when Jesus put that on his eyes, the, saliva, the mixed his spit, his saliva with the clay, the, the dirt made that little clay, put it on his eyes, that meant he, he couldn't see then for sure, even if he wasn't blind. So he said, go wash, and gave him something to do to obey the Lord. And he went, and, and here's the, the teaching in this. So he went, he obeyed, and he washed, he obeyed, and he came back seeing. And that's uh, another verse here in the Bible that talks about response to God's word. Believing it, trusting in it, obeying it, does result in blessing from God. So we continue on here. Therefore, in verse 8, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, isn't this he who sat and begged? So he was just a blind beggar. And some said, this is he. Others said, well, he's like him. <laughs> and I like this blind man because what he said sounds a little, uh, not quite, but a little sarcastic. He said, I'm he, <laughs> I'm here. It's like, I can still hear you. I can, uh, and I'm the one, yeah. And therefore they said, well, how are your eyes open? And he answered, and here, listen to what he said in verse 11, a man called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received sight. Very simple. Then they said to him, well, where is he? He said, I don't know. Now, here's the reason. Starting at verse 13, here's what's really going on. They brought him who formerly was blind, that's his neighbors, brought him to the Pharisees, and it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Many times the Pharisees tried to say that Jesus was breaking the Sabbath by doing work on the, on the Sabbath day. And really, there were Old Testament verses that talk about you're allowed to pull your ox out of the ditch even on the Sabbath because it, you had to get him out of there. But at any rate, verse 15, then the Pharisees also asked him again how he received his sight. And he said to them, uh, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. And therefore they said, well, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who's a sinner do such signs? And there was a division. In verse 17, they said to the blind man again, let me turn that off. What do you say about him because he opened your eyes? And the blind man said he's a prophet. But the thing that I like most about him is besides kind of badgering the Pharisees a little bit as he went on, this blind man made a statement that says it all, sums this whole thing up. He answered and said, well, verse 24, so they again called the man and said to him, give God glory. We know this man's a sinner. And here's what the blind man said, my favorite quote by him. He answered and said, whether he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see.